Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Monterey on tonight. And look who's here. Hello, once, everyone. Once again, this is Katie Brizzoni. I got, I got her name right, finally, because I got it wrong the first time she was on the show. Show number 21? 21, I think. It's a long time ago, and then she was on show 50-something. Mm. Can't remember that one. I can't remember the number, but tonight it's <laughs> show 85. Can you believe it? 85. I didn't think after last week and the month of May when I fell down, Carmel, that I'd ever be back here. But look, I'm here. He's back. And, He's better than and, ever. And thanks to Katie. She gave me a lot of inspiration. Mm. You did. Thanks. Because that's what she does. She's a coach. Mm. Where's her name, Dylan? Put that, <laughs> put that, what she does. See? Coach, entrepreneur. And boy, is mm. she a coach and an entrepreneur. And she's got some secrets. Well, they're, they're, they're not really secrets. They're kind of rumors. <laughs> that she, rumors. Uh, rumors that she told me about yesterday. Mm. And it has to do with the very famous Taylor Swift. Oh, my gosh, Gary. And I checked. <laughs> now, listen, I called Nicole Truskowski mm -hmm. because, you know, she's a big-time realtor. Yeah. She sold Brad Pitt his house. Yeah. And I said, all right, Nicole, what's the story? What's going on with Taylor? She said, well, Gary, she was shopping in Carmel. But so far, she hasn't found the, the house, house she wants. You know, I hope that if she does find a house that we can keep her privacy because yes. that beautiful woman deserves privacy and a normal life wherever she can get it. And if she does find a place here in Carmel, hopefully she'll have a she'll big gate, have... a stone wall around mm -hmm. like Brad does. Yeah, right. she'll have some privacy and get to pretend to be normal for a little bit. And you know what else? You know what else about Taylor? She was at the concert in Paris, France a couple of weeks ago. I was. Tell everybody about it. It was amazing. I mean, if you're a Swifty or not, like, she is such an incredible artist. And I think what I love the most about going to this concert was how she was able to create connection between generations of people. It's absolutely remarkable. I mean, you had little kids there, and you had people who were seniors. 70 years old, yes. seniors, seniors. And... Yeah. They came together over her music, and that's now, did what you I know, love so did much. Did you know her music that she performed in that concert? You know, I know about five of her songs. <laughs> I, I know her music, for okay. sure, but yeah. I didn't know the words. Mm -hmm. But I knew about five of the songs by heart from like high school, different, different time periods of my life. But... It's kind of fun going to concerts like that, because you get to really listen to the lyrics and yeah. really just get the whole experience to wash over you. And, and so. she writes her own material. Yeah. And, you know, we're going to share later, if Dylan can find it, on Katie's Instagram, there's a video <laughs> of Katie dancing <laughs> at the Taylor Swift concert. So we're going to see if we can play that tonight on the air. Oh, Gary. Yeah, why not? It's fun. I mean, hey. Yeah. Oh, you said the magic word. I said, said the, the magic, magic word. word. It's fun. So if fun. you want to have a little bit of fun. If I like guys... to start out every single day dancing. You do? Yeah. It's the best way to start the day. Pick your favorite song. Put on your speakers. Let the music take you away. You know, there's someone in the studio tonight that's going to make his first appearance on Monterey on tonight. Mm -hmm. He's my colleague from KMBY Radio. His name is Greg Dean. He does Love Songs on the Bay mm. every Sunday night from 6 to 10 o'clock. KMBY, 95.9 FM, 1240 AM. And Dean, Mr. Greg Dean and I have been climbing in my car and turning the stereo up wide mm -hmm. open and listening. Jamming to, out. Oh, yeah, jamming out. Have you do that? Oh, God. I think if you were to see me in the car, there's a 99% chance that I'm singing top of my lungs and dancing. I mean, always have a hand on the wheel, but one hand on the wheel, one hand dancing. You'd be good at carpool karaoke. I really would be. Yeah. I've thought about this a yeah. lot, actually. Maybe we should do that. I like to call it Katie Karaoke. Katie Karaoke. Yeah. Oh, and there's something else tonight. 
<laughs> that we're going to play on the show. We got permission from NBC. Jimmy Fallon was here in Monterey a what? couple of weeks ago. Oh, yeah. Hmm. And we got the clip that he did on his Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon. You know the story about that? No. When Johnny Carson did... Me. And when Johnny Carson did The Tonight Show, this is years and years before you were born, mm -hmm. uh, Johnny was The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. Mm -hmm. And then when Johnny retired, Jay Leno came on. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't The Tonight Show starring Jay Leno. It was just mm -hmm. The Tonight Show right. with Jay Leno. And then when Jay retired, Jimmy Fallon came on. And now it's The Tonight Show starring... Jimmy Fallon. Mm. So Charlie, you know, our major D yeah. from the studio, said, Gary, you should change it. So it's Monterey on tonight starring Gary Morris. I said, no, like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I have enough people out there that think I'm a narcissist. We're not, we're not going to do that. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, Gary. Anyway. I would say that that's not true. Well. You have a healthy relationship with your ego. There you go. <laughs> Is that what you call it? Yeah. As you know, you're a coach. Yeah. yeah. I do? I do? Really? Yeah. I do. I, I mean, you love... Do you love... hear what she said? I hear a healthy relationship with my ego. Yeah. Well, my ego's my friend. It should be. We demonize the ego, and the ego, actually, we need to have a healthy relationship with it. And, and my experience of you has been that. I mean, you love being on TV, which is a beautiful thing, and you get to bring people joy and fun and a lot of different beautiful things from our past that is missing... And today, did and I, that's a gift. Did I tell you about the nice lady that called because she was missing me the whole month of May that I was Aww. out? And she called and left a voicemail, and she said, I'm so sorry what happened to you. How come you're not on the air anymore? Are there any new shows? And then she watched last week's show when we came on with the new show, and she called right back. She says, oh, I'm rejoicing. You're back. <laughs> Maybe I should play See? that. Dylan, maybe we can okay, send well, that to you. Maybe yeah. if we play it, that's crossing the healthy boundary. Is that boundary. crossing the line? Yeah. But, but, but telling them and being like, this is beautiful. Okay. I'm making people happy. You're right. You know, that's See, good. See, that's why she's a good coach. <laughs> she keeps you in, in, in just, line. Just in line, you know. Yeah. So you, cross, you don't have to know when you cross the boundaries. Because <laughs> everybody's got boundaries. Mm -hmm. It's true. Boundaries right. are healthy and important. So tonight. 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 We're doing something, and this is kind of dedicated to my co-producer, Wendy Brickman, because she is a Rolling Stones fan. Ooh. And so we're going to play this concert tonight, especially for Wendy Brickman. It's the Rolling Stones. It's from a few years back, so they're all a little younger in the video. But, you know, they're going to be at Levi Stadium next oh, month. Oh, that's cool. Well, yeah. so who knows what will happen? Never know. You never know. Never know. Okay, let's get started. Dylan Holmes is behind the screens. He's got... Go, Dylan. Go, yeah, Dylan. Go. Let's go, Dylan, and let's get started <laughs> with the Rolling Stones tonight. <laughs> it's the Rolling Stones on Monterey on Tonight with Gary Morris and Katie Brizzoni. And are we having some fun here tonight? Because Katie brought all of her little goodies. She did. I brought she, lots of goodies. The last time she was here, she brought a bunch of them. I let's, brought a whole bag full let's, of goodies. Let's, let's start with this one. Oh, Pooh Bear. Pooh Bear? Mm. So now... Wait, we're, look at that pair. Well, he's going to put it on that camera right there. Yeah. Okay. So tell us the story about Pooh Bear. Well, this is just all about bravery. It says you're braver than you believe. And Really? Yeah. When have you had to be brave, Gary? Ooh, good question. You know, you are going to, we're going to switch chairs. We tonight. are. This is just a little foreshadowing. And she's going to fire these questions at me. And I'm going to be stumped. You ever see Stump the Gare? Well, that's <laughs> going to happen right here on this show tonight at 7 o'clock. Stump the Gare? Stump the Gare. You've been brave. You were just brave. I was? What, you mean when I fell down? Yeah. Well, I don't know about that. You were very brave. Yeah. I mean, when your eye gets torn up Banged. and you fall, you have to be resilient, yeah. speaking of. Oh, what a tie-in. Good tie-in. 
<laughs> we want to thank somebody out we there do. in TV land. Bill, 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 Bill Grimm and Mary Ann Grimm, because last night they were kind enough to invite Katie and I to dinner at mm -hmm. their home. And this is Bill's book. And he was kind enough to give me a copy, autographed, and he was kind enough to give Katie an autographed copy as okay. well. And so here we are on television tonight talking about Bill Grimm's book. Why don't you, because you thumbed through it, mm -hmm. I just started reading it the last week before, after he and I had lunch. Tell me what you think about Bill's book. Well, I haven't really went through it yet. However, in talking with Bill, what I felt was a very, very strong, resilient man who has overcome a lot and has been able to move through challenges and extract uh, really, really creative and courageous energy that yes. has helped him turn around and grow so many different companies and then also grow himself and yeah. stretch himself and and be brave constantly as he's transitioned through different roles and jobs and i think that's something that we all could learn from and the energy of resilience is something that helps us thrive and if we all have that as a muscle to flex within ourselves as we go through life then we're going to be better off and yeah. so checking out this book and just like getting in touch with the times in your life where you've had to be resilient is such an important thing for us all to do um and you mentioned to me that you're writing a book now. I am writing a book. Yes. <laughs> yes. Have you come up with a title yet? No. no well, title. I have different ideas for the title, yeah. yes. But, yeah. what's but it, is it going to be about your life so far? What, what's it going to be about? Um, there will be stories about my life, but it'll more be about helping us learn the language of our inner beasts and understand our inner world and help us discover what we're really here to do and how we're meant to serve and and it it's kind of about the art of our heart and getting that. in tune art of our heart yeah that would be a good title that would be a good title that one just came to me <laughs> <laughs> there you go thank you monterey on tonight and well, gary morris you never know how things happen <laughs> um but yeah I the think, art of your heart don't yeah. steal that man. don't Copyright oh, no. that. Copyright that tomorrow. Yeah, I should. Uh, but yeah, I think it's it's it draws on psychology and evolutionary biology and quantum science and wow. Wow, um, wow, wow. epigenetics and all of these things that help us dive into our inner world and understand everything that we've gone through and create systems and structures within our subconscious so that we can process our past, process our experiences as we're going through them and be able to really extract the wisdom from all the things we're going through. Even the hardest things that we go through are opportunities for us to um, build muscles and build capacity to serve each other, wow. serve community, serve yourself, you see, be this more is, present in relationships. This is what happens when you graduate from Cal. <laughs> go Bears! I'm wearing my Bear King necklace you, you tonight. Are? Yeah. Okay. We're going to talk about that later. You will. Yeah. And thank you, Bill, thank you, Bill. Grimm, thank you, for the books. Attitude of Resilience. You can buy it on Amazon. Go check it out. Can we get a tight shot, maybe? Well, there's Bill's picture, but we don't have that set up real tight. But um, it was so much fun. It was. And it was a great evening mm -hmm. and great food. and Great uh, conversation. Great conversation. We talked about so many things. We did. We did. Yeah. Do you, and we had a little tiny bit of champagne. Just I a, had a sip. A sip. And I didn't turn bright red. No, you didn't. You did great. That's a win. You did great. Yeah. Okay, let's get back to more Rolling Stones. Then we're going to bring our first guest into this show tonight. And I've been trying to get him here for the whole year and a half we've been on the air. You did it. I did it. He's in the house Resilience. tonight. Doug Lee. How about that? Perseverance. And we have a whole long story about him. Ooh. But he's, you know, he said um, that he uh, wants to talk about the Monterey Pops. Well, I want to talk to him about his talent agency, but I don't know whether mm. he's, he's doing that anymore. So we'll find out right after this song, more, one more song, 
from the Rolling Stones on Monterey on Tonight. And we are back with Katie Brizzoni, who is my co-host. This is her third time on the show. It is. And third she, times. Actually, they say fourth time's a charm, right? Is it third or fourth? Well, I think it's actually third time, but but then I think of four-leaf clovers, so I think it could oh, also be... Oh, you're right about that. Yeah. Four. Well, we always too. forget about four-leaf clovers. I don't. You don't? No, I spend a lot of time looking for four-leaf clovers. Do you? But and then I you... remember, then I remember that four-leaf clovers actually find you. You don't oh, find them. Oh, wow. I never thought about that. Yeah. But that's... That's where it's at. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. a good one. <laughs> no, really. That Hey, they find you. You they don't do. find them. Got to open up your heart and allow the special nature of them to, to speak to, to you, to draw you to Ooh. towards them. It's like abalone shell hunting. Mm-hmm. The first time we met, she gave me an abalone shell. That I did. And I wrote in the date that we met because that was the first time she was a co-host. Mm-hmm. Almost a year and a half ago. I know. It's been long a long time. time. And um, we've had, you know, 85, this is the 85th show. And so that was like in the first 20. You yeah. Were, you were on the air. And I got her name wrong. It's all right. Brizzoni's tough, you know? I Although should, you are I, Italian. I'm Italian. Yeah, I should have You should have got that. I should have known it's okay, Brizzoni. Gary. Mistakes are opportunities for us to get better and to improve. So See that? It's all right. That's what and I like. mistakes also humble yourself, which is... Humility is one of the most important things we can have as a skill, as an ability, as a part of our being, as a part of our heart, for a healthy relationship to our ego, to our spirit, to everything. If any of this that she's saying kind of (laughs) rings a bell for you out there in TV land and you're looking for a life coach, that's what she does. Yep. Dylan, put her website up on the on the screen, katiebrizzoni.com, because that's how you find her. There she is. Aw, there I am. And there's I love my that, little self. Yeah, there's that little six-year-old, mm. too, on the screen. Yeah. And you are available to help people with whatever. It's true. True. And, and you're getting pretty busy. I am getting busy. I can tell. Yeah. Because she's hard to get a hold of. <laughs> You, I, I always pick up. I yeah, people. but I don't try and bug you. I that's true. I don't try and you bug you. Don't her. bug me. No, I you know, I'm persistent. You are persistent, but to us to a degree, I back off when I know I need to back off. <laughs> and uh, I do that because she's busy. She's a busy gal. She's got a lot going on in her life, like going to Paris to see. Taylor Swift. Come on. That was fun. And Monet's Garden and Versailles. Oh. And eat croissants. I had did a croissant class. Oh. So really? fun. Oh. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. That's the one I was talking about. There she is. Taylor Swift concert. Oh my God, Dylan. God uh, bless you. Dylan you found made it. Made me turn bright red. Dylan found it. That's the one I was talking about. That was the one you were talking about. I was dancing. I don't get embarrassed to dance. But Dylan, play one more time. Oh no. <laughs> yes, one don't. more time. I want to no. see you one more time. Dylan, play one oh, more time, God. please. One more time. There it is. Oh God. There it is. There it is. Were you having That's my fun? friend Jess. That's Jess? She's awesome. Oh, my goodness. Hi, Jess. Hi, Jess. She's in Nashville. Is she? You're she going is. to see her. Yeah, she's an incredible developer of people. Wow. And wow. of business. Is she a coach, too, like you? Um, She's not an official coach, but she, she has a team, a huge team of people. She's created a whole training program for people and developed them. She works with people, you know, 18, 16, up till, Wow. you know. Good for her. Whatever age, yeah. I want to meet her. You should meet her. She's okay. fantastic. Great. Shout out to Jen. Would she be on the show? Yeah, Maybe she'd love a to Zoom be on call? the show. Yeah. Would she do Zoom? Okay. Yeah. Set it up. About leadership, Wendy, for sure. we got another person for the show. I'm yes. Listen, I'm really getting a lot of people now mm-hmm. for the show. That's it's, because you're doing good things, Gary. I am? Think so? Yeah. It's coming sure. from her. I didn't say it. <laughs> All right, we have to make room now for for our new special feature. This is going to be a weekly feature right here on Monterey on tonight every week. Now we're going to do this. 
we're bringing in my colleague from KMBY Radio, Mr. Craig Dean. And he's going to be sitting right here when we come back. And we're going to do a special feature each week, Love Songs on the Bay. Okay? Every week, right about this time. So, Dylan, let's go back to the Stones, and then we're going to come back with Greg Dean right here. Welcome back to Monterey on Tonight. I'm Katie Brizzoni, and we are doing a little bit of a role reversal tonight. So, normally Gary is obviously leading the show, but tonight, for this next little bit, I'm going to take you on a journey into Gary's inner world and give him a chance to hopefully share some stories with us that we haven't had the opportunity to hear before. So something that I love to do and I've spent so much time thinking about, I'm very passionate about, is giving people a space to tell stories. We all have stories about life, about love, about loss. And the more we share those, the more we can learn from people that are on the journey and the more we can um, really start to embody and live from a place of wisdom and integrity. So that is the goal of this little session. So I brought with me a bag of goodie bags, kind of like my Mary Poppins bags. And I'm going to have Gary just pick from what is in front of us, something that speaks to his heart. And we're just going to run with it from there and see what happens. And she's got a lot of stuff. I do have a lot of stuff and they're all different types of things because really quickly, Really quickly, what happens, we externalize things in our environment that we can't understand internally. So we can use objects, things, stuffed animals, books to help us learn about things that we're trying to process inside or things that are calling within us that want to be shared. So that's what we're going to get to see tonight from Gary. So she put all this stuff right here on the table. And the first one that caught my eye was this one here that has the writing on it. Tell me, what is it, what is your, what is your plan to do with, tell me, what (laughs) is it? (laughs) Can't read. Well, it's, what is it your plan to do with your one wildest precious life? It's Mary Oliver quote. Question. Yep. Well, my life, my precious life... (laughs) has had a lot of twists and turns in it. But as of until I fell last month in Carmel, I was having an absolutely perfect life. Mm. I really was. And um, the fall kind of woke me up and said, Gary, what are you doing? You're flying too high. Come on down a few notches. Mm. Because it really was. um, In fact, I would tell people, Katie, I'm on an all-time high. Mm. And if I went any higher, I'd be in heaven. And I'm Mm. not taking anything for it. So if my life continues to go the way it's going, uh, I couldn't be any happier Mm. than I am right now. So what what changed after your fall? How did it reground you? And and how have you put yourself back into the world from a... What it what it did place. is it was kind of a wake up. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we go down the road of life, yeah. and I have a saying: when you go down the road of life, read the signs. Mm. And the sign that I saw by the fall was to wake up mm. and uh, come down a few notches, and because I was up there in the stratosphere, <laughs> I was, <laughs> and and now I'm I think I've slowed things down a little bit. And there's more meaning. Mm, yeah, when we slow down, we can see and feel different things. Yes. And when we're moving really, really fast and yep. flying through life from that vantage point. So um, that's it. I mean, you know, things could not be better. Amazing. Okay, next. Next. What's speaking to you? Oh, my goodness. Uh, you've got a lot here. I do. Um, Don't think about it. Just pick something. Just pick. All right. How about this one? Ooh. Let go, let God. Mm. Wow, that's a nice one. And I know you are the one that painted these. I am the one that painted these. And this is, Dylan, can we get a shot of this? (laughs) Look at that. Mm. She does all of these. She did the last one I had in my hand. (laughs) And uh, look at this here. We have to show this. That was the last one. These are all driftwood. Yeah. So you go out to the beach and you pick up driftwood, don't you? I do. I collect driftwood. And they're beautiful. And you've got a lot of books here. And she's got got some of the stuffed animals. This is kind of my favorite. Oh, 
tell me well, what do you love about that bear. Well, uh, because um, I love the bear, but you know what, sh- what really popped out is the bear has this heart right mm. here. And, you know, it's all about heart. It is all about heart. And, uh, and that's what when, when, when people love, it's they love from the heart. It's true. Am what, I, are, what are some of the most beautiful things in the world that you love? The most beautiful things in the world that I love is the Monterey Peninsula. Okay. I really do love it here. I think it's one of the most beautiful places on the mm-hmm. planet Earth. And I feel so fortunate to be able to make the Monterey Peninsula home. Yeah. Wonderful. Because I know you do. I That's true. And and Bear, Bear in my world takes us on a journey from things that have felt broken in our lives and helps us understand that there is beauty waiting oh. to be felt and and alchemized from things and times where we felt broken. And so I'm wondering if anything speaks to you around that. Has there been a time where you felt broken before? Well, your heart felt broken? Yeah, probably before I ever got here Okay. to the Monterey Peninsula. I came because of mom, mm-hmm. and uh, I drive by every day and look at that beautiful Monterey Bay and say, mm. Mom, thank you so much for getting me here. Because I thought I was coming for her, but it really turned out to be uh, I was coming for me. Mm. And in fact, this one pops up right now, mm. Katie. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks to Mom. Mm. Look at this one. Dylan, get that shot there. <laughs> Thanks. Because I am so thankful and so grateful to uh, to have been able to be and change my life because maybe some of you folks don't know I spent most of my life in Fresno mm. I was born and raised there and it was a great town to grow up in and uh, but the weather didn't cooperate very well with me because you know it gets warm in Fresno I think this last week they had uh, over a hundred mm. and I you know in my older age can't tolerate that heat mm. but the weather here is so beautiful just so wonderful and i love living here Good. so thanks mom everybody if you can whoever's watching give your mom a call if she's not here with you yes. give yourself a hug say thank you mom absolutely thanks to all the moms out there for for yeah. nurturing and if you have your mom still with you Turn off the TV and call mom right yeah. now and talk to her because I can't do that anymore. Yeah. My mom is hopefully in heaven. Well, how, how about we take a little bit of time to honor your mom? What Can, let's, you, can let, you share a story with us? Oh. The, the, something that you've learned from the, your mom that the you mom, live every day? The mom thing that still lives, Katie, in me is the fact that she taught me how to make the pasta sauce. Ooh. And I can still knock it off because... <laughs> I recorded mom making the spaghetti sauce. Mm. And when I taste the spaghetti sauce now, it's mom. She's back. Mm. She's she's there in the in the dining room and uh, the the scent of the pasta and and the we called it gravy. The, gravy. Yeah, that's that's what the Italians call their pasta sauce is oh, gravy. I love that. Yeah. And, and you're going to have to try it. I would love to try the it. The only thing is we can't do the cheese we with you. Yeah. We well, we, we, there's special cheese we can is use. There? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll well, be you able have to have cheese see, eventually. The, the, the part of the, the great part of the pasta is, uh, is the, uh, the cheese. Mm. Okay. Because I had a teacher, this is very intriguing. Mm. Um, I've had a lot of teachers. Yeah. Lots of great teachers in my life. I think I talked about uh, one night. You in, did the spark. The spark. You did. Lucia Pamela. She was my piano teacher way back when. And uh, I was just telling Doug earlier, I'm sorry I didn't finish my piano lessons. Mm. That would have been today. I'd be at the Remission Ranch playing the piano and singing. <laughs> well, have you had any other recent teachers in the past well, yes. five years, but mentors, that, people that have come into your life that have taught you to appreciate or you see know, the world differently? The, 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 the mentors that I've had, and mm-hmm. I've had a lot of great mentors, the mentors that I've had were mentors that I had when I was just getting into the television business mm-hmm. and helping me in the TV business. Now, I think the roles are reversed, and I'm the mentor now. Yeah, and absolutely. I'm doing a lot of mentoring now, and I enjoy it so much, so much. Mm-hmm. In fact, you met tonight Greg Dean's son, Ryan, out in the green room. 
And uh, that's a young man that I want to mentor. I want to find out what his passions are, and I want to help him find his way in life because that kid could do anything he wants. Yeah. He really could. That's I really don't mean to call you a kid, Ryan. <laughs> it's okay. But I'm, you're only 18. We're all kids. We all have a kid inside of us. Always, no matter how old you are, that kid is still Now, alive. here's something that pops up mm. because it says Hail Mary. And I went to Catholic grammar school oh. and I went to Catholic high school and I learned how to pray. Mm. And boy, is that important to learn. Learning how to pray. So and, important. And I think I took some lessons from my grandma. Oh, really? Because my grandma said the rosary every single day. Mm. My grandma Rosina. And I learned so much because grandma always had the beads in her hand. Mm. And so that's why I say the rosary. Yeah, now, it's because so of meditative grandma. and calms yeah. you down. So how would you say that growing up with a faith and having that as oh. a part of your foundation has supported you throughout your life my mother saw to it and dad mm. too that i had a parochial education i went to catholic grammar school saint Teresa's, and i went to catholic high school san joaquin memorial in fresno and graduated from san joaquin and i think that structured my life and just made me you know built the foundation of yeah. who i am and so i i i tell you out there if you're a parent if you can get your children involved in uh, a religion, whatever religion it is, it's so important, mm -hmm. so important, because it formulated who I am. Yeah, it really did. Feeling into something bigger than ourselves is yeah. so important, and that I think served you as you fell, being able to connect oh, to something yeah. bigger and deeper within yourself, and how to how to move through it. Katie, the I resilience. knew, I knew when I fell mm. that I, it could have been fatal. Yeah. Because the doctor said you're a lucky man, mm. because I didn't get a cranial fracture, and because of that, I thank the man upstairs. Mm. I said thank you. I, you're giving me another pass. I don't deserve it probably, but I'm going to be around longer to do what I love to do. In fact, I said it last week. I'm doing this. Because the man upstairs wants me to do more yeah. Monterey on tonight. <laughs> well, it, I mean, you're doing something really, really beautiful for the community in terms of bringing people on who are living their dreams, doing Thank things you. they're passionate about, and you're giving them a mouthpiece and a place well, to do what they we're love. We're going to be doing, you know, you know, we're working on it right now. We're going to be doing something for Katie. Mm. She's going to be doing a pilot for a children's show. And so because of her passion yeah. for kids and the television business, because she's great, you can see. I mean, here she is. <laughs> I, I told her, that, you but... could do the show. I don't need to be here. Maybe you'll be my <laughs> co-host when I'm gone. <laughs> hey. Anyway, you, you, you have what it takes, Katie, to do this job. And I really don't want to refer to it as a job because it's, it's, it's an honor. It, it's, a, it's a fun thing to it do. It is fun. It is fun. I have I have so much fun when I'm here every week. Well, you get to give people a platform to share their heart, to share their stories. To and share this the one here, this, this will be to. the last one I'm going to grab. Oh. But Katie brought this one, and this is special. <laughs> this one is special. Mm. Okay, you see that one right there? It's on the screen. Okay, here's my question for you. Yeah. One life skill. One you, life that has been with skill. you in oh every goodness. moment of your life that you would like to share with people. One, one life skill. I think God gave me the ability to talk. <laughs> <laughs> and I can talk and talk and talk most people under the table. Well, that's a beautiful thing because we need to express ourselves and express our hearts and undam the rivers of our heart in order to feel... Um, to feel connected to life, to feel connected to people. And so we could all probably learn a lesson about sharing and, and expressing our and heart from this Mary. this little pamphlet here was done by this young lady <laughs> when she was five years old. Yeah. And it's got all these beautiful little, you are Sense of amazing. Humor. <laughs> I wonder what this one says. Should we see what my little yeah. self wanted to say? Yeah. What okay. did you say? What was that all about, Katie? Sense of humor is to be happy and laugh at yourself or just plain laugh. I have a good sense of humor when I say a joke and when I do something on accident. <laughs> <laughs> I could have a better sense of humor when my brothers are mean to me. Oh, wow. Oh, 
Oh, you know, this is interesting because I don't remember my brothers really ever being mean to me. Uh -huh. Oh, actually, you know what? They were because sometimes I have two older brothers and I'm seven and eight years younger than them. And they would have like their girlfriends over and they uh -huh. would tell me it's big girl, big boy time. And oh. they wouldn't let me oh. play with them. Oh. And that's what all of my journal entries were about, that they wouldn't let they me play with them. They didn't want you around. They didn't want Little me sister. around when it was Little sister. big girl, yeah. big boy time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Little sister didn't like that. It was mean. <laughs> well, this is funny. You know what? Now I'm going to invite you back okay. again. Okay. And we're going to do this all again, over because we got we so, have so many. We have more. so many other things that we haven't had time to to delve into. I mean, look at this one here. Um, it's so much friendlier with two. Oh, How about it's that? True. And is it true? Okay, let's what see. And that's a little stamp. It is a stamp. What? One more thing before okay. we take right. take a break. What's friendlier with two? What do you like to do oh, with another person? Uh, I it, break bread. Yeah. Well, of course. You know. Yeah. Dinner. Dinner, lunch, whatever, breakfast, whatever. Mm -hmm. No, it's, um, and we talked about this, we travel. Did. Travel. Travel. Experiencing new things with yeah. people is so fun. And getting to see the world through someone else's eyes is Absolutely. really fun. Obviously your own as well, but Absolutely. watching people be filled with joy and, mm. and like see what they're tuning to is really fun. This has been a great session. Thank mm. you, Coach. You're welcome. And uh, she's going to be was. back. <laughs> And we're going to do this again in the future when she's back as a Yeah, we should bring Dylan host. back on. I know. We have to do this with Dylan. Dylan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we get him out of behind those monitors. Yeah, over Dylan there. deserves to be yes. on screen. Yeah, we're going to do that. Yeah, yeah. Did you notice he cut his hair? Yeah, Dylan's looking good. <laughs> there you go, Dylan. Looking good, Dylan. Looking good, can Dylan. Can you turn the camera around on yourself? Yeah, well, he can turn on his what? camera. Turn on your camera, Dylan. Show him your haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, look yes. at that. There you look go. At look Dylan. at that. No looking more good. no more looking long hair. Sharp. Dylan's gonna be on at 845 tonight with all of the hits of today. That's his section of the show at 845. Anyway, thank you so much for this. Thank this was you, so Gary. much fun. And we kind of changed the way we do the show with we you did. over there and me over here. Wasn't that different fun? angles? I different hope you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this little session I with Katie did. and Gary. And now it's time for us to get back to the Rolling Stones. And did you know Mick Jagger's eighty? I can't believe it. So how is it so far, Katie? We have been here now almost two hours. We have. And you have been spending a lot of time out there in the green room. You've been doing your coaching. I have. Haven't you? I have, even yeah, out there. Out there in the green. Yeah, it's been she, like two hours of coaching. I can't believe it. But it's fun. Yeah, she, you've been having fun. I have. See, that's the word now. I've infected her with the word fun. You I have. See. You've really inspired me to have fun every single day. And it's the fastest way to get what we want, actually, is if we follow joy and fun. And, you know, it just dawned on me one day about what am I going to do for the rest of my life so that mm -hmm. every day is fun? How many people out there? Think about that. How many not people? Enough. No, not enough. Mm -mm. I mean, come on. Yeah. What are you going to do to have fun? And there are ways you can weave fun into everything you do. Going yeah, to absolutely. Grocery store, yeah. driving, sitting in traffic. Yeah, no, I, I liked that one. Sitting in traffic? Yeah, the one you said sitting in traffic. Yeah, I mean, you can take it as a invitation to pause. Yeah. Put and it. rest or to listen to a good song and sing. Yeah. Look around you. Enjoy the sights. Absolutely. Rest. Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. How do you get people, Katie, because of your, your work in coaching, mm -hmm. how do you get them to make a turnaround? How, how do you take the bad and turn it into good? How do you do that? Well, there's a lot of different ways. It depends, right? You have to speak the language of the person. And I think I've, I mean, I've created these characters, right? That take us on a journey. Each one does that. Yeah. Helps us look at things we've done wrong or things that feel broken or wounds, right? And helps us extract the wisdom, what we're willing to do to heal, mm -hmm. what is beautiful within these things. But I think too, it's just a matter of using stories and you, help. you like to tell stories, don't you? I do. I love to tell stories, but I also love to give people the opportunity to tell stories. And then I listen uh. and then I, I kind of focus on something that they glazed over mm. and then we kind of orient energy a different way to water these seeds that mm -hmm. 
most people maybe didn't see as opportunities to come into a new relationship with themselves, to switch their, switch their perspective on something. And ultimately, every single challenge we go through every is an opportunity for us to learn about ourselves and to learn about what we're here to do and how we're meant to serve. I mean, our there is no one in the world out there who has your exact unique set of experiences. Same True. with me. Yeah. And we all, it's our job, it's our responsibility to fall in love with our story, to fall in love with our challenges, because that is literally what we're here to teach to, to serve from. Yeah to honor, to love. So And in your in your coaching work, mm-hmm. you not only work with adults, yeah. you work with kids. Yes, kids and adults. Kids and adults. CEOs, all all the, the different whole, things, businesses. You run the gamut. Yeah, I yeah. do. The whole thing. Mm-hmm. And is there in your work, is yeah. there any challenge because of a certain demographic? I mean, are the adults harder to work with than the uh, uh, than the children? Um Where's the it, challenges in your work? The challenges, you know what? Like, I don't really think it's a challenge because I just get to create a space for people to be who they've always wanted to be. Mm-hmm. Like, I haven't actually experienced, like, in, in my work. I mean, of course, there are challenges. I'm helping people in these SOS moments. So they're coming to me with major challenges. But... I don't see challenges as challenges. I see them as opportunities. So ah. as long as I hold that for them, mm-hmm. they get the ability to relate to these mm-hmm. things differently. And that feels good. Yeah. And yeah. all of a sudden they can get into a different energy. So you can actually, in a session, mm-hmm. you can feel the change. Oh, immediately. 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 Yeah. How long are the sessions? It depends. Uh, 50 minutes. Some are 50 minutes. Like my kid sessions are usually around 50 minutes. Um, sessions with, you know, CEOs and adults, an hour and a half. Now, when you do the coaching, mm-hmm. is it one only in the session? Or do you have multiple people, two, three people, like CEOs? Yeah. yeah. Like um, the CEO and someone else in the organization? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm doing an intensive in the next two weeks with a CEO and a sales rep. So, yeah, I mean, I... Okay do intensives and different things with different groups of people. It really, it really depends what the challenges are and who is connected in the web. So it's all about being able to see how things are connected and to facilitate that connection on a deeper level and help clear out the things that are blocking Mm -hmm. um, you from being able to get what you want and serve the way that you're meant to serve. So, well, if you want to get a hold of Katie, Dylan, put that website up if you will, before we go to break now. And, oh, guess what? That must be Wendy Brickman. Is that Wendy Brickman? Yeah, I have a question for Katie. Oh, Ooh, all Wendy. right. Well, let, well, let me do my official greeting. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Wendy Brickman, who is our who is our co-producer of this show. And she has a question she has. She's not on yet because she's going to be on in a few minutes. <laughs> but she has a question for Katie yeah. before Katie goes out in the green room. Go ahead. Ask away, Wendy. Yeah. Katie. Yeah. Katie, I spent a half hour in a virtual meeting this week uh-huh. with a very impressive man who is our chief of police in the city of Monterey. Mm-hmm. And we spent a lot of time talking about the unhoused, the homeless. And I would like to see if you could work with them or gathering for women because I think they're hurting and your approach is fun and toys and props. Have you ever done that? Um, I would love to do that. I haven't worked specifically with homeless people yet, but I mean, I talk with them everywhere I go (laughs) and um, I love to be of service to people and give them an opportunity to share their stories and understand more deeply what what got them to this point. I think yeah. it's an invitation for all of us to really lean on our compassion and our heart and and instead of looking at them like they've done something wrong, wrong it's yeah. like there's something for us all to learn and so I would love to be able to learn. Well, we'll them. introduce you to the chief of police, Katie. Let's do I it. Will, yeah, absolutely. You start. I mean or gathering for women, there's a wonderful man named Abdel. Mm-hmm. Really, really nice. He owns the Wharf General Store and another one across the way on the Wharf. And he's 
He's on their board. He's a lovely, lovely man. Maybe we start with him rather than the chief of police. You yeah. know, I, for women, I think you would relate with women more because you're a woman. Yeah. I mean, I actually, it's funny. A lot of my, most of my clients are men. I mean, I, I work with both, but oh. I, I grew up with two brothers and all guy cousins. So I also love working okay, with okay. men. <laughs> yeah. No, the thing is they're taking drugs and you have to kind of deal with that. And I also and, am. I've spent a lot of time, y- yeah, with <laughs> with that, not not with myself, but with people. So that's not something I'm afraid of entering into. This was but, meant. Th- well, I mean, you look at Mick Jagger, which I've been watching, and you look at Keith Richards, and Keith is not on heroin anymore. Something must have woken him up. Yeah, I mean, someone ultimately, someone heroin. someone who's taking drugs is in a lot of pain, yeah. and there's a lot for us to learn about what they've had to push down and depress and how, you know, given a mm-hmm. lack of capacity to be able to process experiences. And so to be able to provide a space for that is an honor and a privilege. So I would love to do that. You know, Wendy, okay, uh, well, I'll, I'll introduce you to Abdel. Okay. For starters. Thanks, Wendy. <laughs> Wendy, you so got me. You... Abdel is from, I don't know where he's from. Like, and yeah, he's a really sweet man. And the other thing he does is he, he connects with, uh, a rabbi, and when there's atrocities for the Jews, he stands by him, and the rabbi stands by him when there's atrocities for mm. Muslims, and I wonder what they're doing now. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah. All right, Wendy, we're going to take our 8 o'clock break, and okay. then we'll be right back with you to talk about what's happening on the Monterey Peninsula <laughs> right after Thanks. this. Thank you. Thank you, Dylan Holmes, and uh, I like those videos, Dylan. Me too. Yeah, yeah, Good yeah. Thanks, Dylan. And uh, I don't know whether you noticed it or not, but Katie did a uh, a change. I mean, you know, it's big time now. Different, I did. different outfit. I put my sweatshirt on, you know. <laughs> Got to give Mickey a shout out. There and Mickey's go. getting ready for bed like all of us. That's right. It's, it's time. It's almost 9 o'clock. That's right. It's bedtime. Yeah. Say a little prayer tonight, everybody. That's right. We will, and I will, and thank will. you, Katie Brizzoni, for yeah. being here on show number 85. Mm. We had fun tonight. We had a great show, lots of interesting time. people. Thank you for doing the little interview with me. Of course. I like that. We're going to do that again. I'd love to. And Katie just promised me that she will be back on show 100. Mm-hmm. So that's 15 it. shows away. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, so everyone, we'll see you next week for show number 86. This is Gary Morris signing off and... Katie Brizzoni signing off. Have a great night, everybody. Good night. Bye.